What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and I've got something really exciting for you today. So in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create this curtain wall panel that's going to be a window. Well, all curtain wall panels are windows, but this is going to be a parametric window that opens. So it's going to be a family with a parameter, so for each window you're going to be able to kind of set a different uh, angle of openness, I guess. And these uh, curtain uh, wall panels usually open up like this from the top, the hinges on the top. So that's what I'm going to be creating in this tutorial. But anyway, before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day. And if you want to download this family as well as all of my other projects, check out my Patreon first, a link in the description. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. So I'm going to be creating this as a family. So here I'm just going to choose a new family and the important part is choosing the right template so I'm just going to go here to the metric uh, library that's just what I prefer using and here I'm going to search for a metric curtain wall panel now there's this pattern based that's not the one that you want to choose you want to choose the the regular one uh, this is the one if you have some uh, crazy warped shape this is just for regular curtain walls where you can place regular opening windows so you just hit open over here and yeah, we wait for a second and this is what you get uh, so this is kind of a, a bit of a parameter that makes these distances equal if you go to maybe the exterior side it looks kind of like this so this is the top one so that's basically what you have so now let's start uh, modeling so the first thing we need to do is we need to create kind of a window frame and for that let's just go to create extrusion and let's just use a rectangle so you go from here to here you place it and then you lock it on all sides so whenever there is a change it's going to be uh, kind of moving along with the, the different panel dimensions then you need to give it an offset of let's do an offset of like 50 millimeters uh, just a narrow frame and you go like this and then you just hit space to uh, flip it on the other side you click now uh, the other the outer ones are locked in place to the panel uh, to the uh, what are these reference planes uh, but the inner ones aren't really locked onto anything so you need to lock them in place and how do you do that well you use this dimension tool or you use the shortcut di and then you go from the reference plane to the line place it lock it from the reference plane to the line place it lock it and do the same thing on all sides place it lock it one more place it lock it okay so now if i go to modify and here for the extrusion end let's just go with uh, something like 50 and hit finish Okay, so this is what we get, and if we go into 3D, so we've got our little narrow frame. Okay, so now inside of this frame, we need to form our uh, panel window. Now, you can do that as a separate family, but I prefer to do it inside of this, so it's not going to be a nested family. Uh, the window or the window panel isn't going to be a nested family, it's going to be part of this uh, family geometry and that's really cool because it simplifies uh, the whole family and uh, you're just about to see how it works. So once we have this done, uh, we can go back to maybe exterior side or maybe let's go to the left side just to see. Yeah, I like this to be poking on the exterior, so I'm just going to change this from 50 to, uh, oops, to minus 50. Yeah, and as you can see now, it's going to the correct uh, place. Now, while we're here, I need to create a hinge point. So this window is going to be hinged over here in the upper part. And to create that hinge point, I need to add another reference plane here at the place where I want, to, want it to be hinged. Hinged? That sounds weird. Anyway, let's go to reference plane or the shortcut RP. And you just go over here from this point you maybe like pull it out like that, maybe stretch it like this. And of course we need to lock it in place. So again, just use this align the dimension or the shortcut DI and just place it like this and lock it in place. So we've got this uh, reference plane over here and now we can use that as a hinge point. So what does that mean? Well, you go to create and you've got this reference line and you select the reference line and I don't know, is there a shortcut? No, there isn't, okay. So you go from this point and you just kind of pull it out like that and you place it like that. Okay, so you've got this and this is actually going to be a reference plane that's representing our window. 
Now, uh, it should be the correct length. And uh, if we go here uh, at the measure tool and we go from the bottom inner part of this frame to the top uh, inner part and we zoom out, it says uh, 3,900 millimeters. So we need to set the same distance over here. And now uh, you're probably asking why are we setting it manually like that? Uh, it's uh, to prevent Revit from messing up and uh, I'll, you'll see why in a moment. So now if I just go here, I need to constrain this point to these two reference planes. So this uh, over here, this little point needs to be constrained to this horizontal plane and to the, this vertical plane. And how do you do that? Well, you use the align tool, AL is the shortcut. So you select this one, you go over here, you tab a few times, and then you find this little point, you select it, lock it in place. Again, you select the vertical one, you hover over this, you tab a few times, you select the point, lock it in place. Okay, so once you have that, we need to create a constraint that constrains this to this length. So you just hit this little uh, um, dimension, temporary dimension permanent, and maybe you can extend it like this, but this number actually needs to change with the height of the window. And we don't know the height of the window. So how do we get that? Well, we need to create another dimension. So you just go DI and you go from the top part to the bottom part and you place it like this. So this is the height of the window and we need to create, to turn this into a parameter and it needs to be a reporting parameter. Now that's the, the parameter that's going to tell us, okay, the window is 4,000 millimeters high. So the panel should be 4,000 minus 100 for the frame. So how do you create that formula in Revit? Well, you need to first select this dimension line that's going to report the height of the window because the height of the window is determined in the end by the curtain, uh, by the curtain wall. So you just go here to create parameter, then you uh, name it, let's just call it height. And oops, I should not have done that. Uh, again, height. And before you hit enter, uh, make sure to make it an instance parameter and make sure to select reporting parameter. So what does that mean? Well, if it's an instance parameter, it's going to allow you to uh, have uh, this parameter be different for different panels. And as uh, curtain walls go, panels can be different sizes on the same curtain wall. So make sure this is an instance and make sure that it's, that it's reporting. So it's only saying what the actual height is, it's not really changing the height. So you just hit OK. Then for this one, you go create parameter. Uh, let's just call it panel height. And make sure that it's just an instance parameter. Hit OK. Then you go over here into the family types dialog and you search for uh, yeah height. So you select that name height and you control C, then you go over here, you control V height minus 100. Hit apply. Okay. So now this height is connected to this height. And if I go over here and change the height a bit, as you can see, this lengthens. And if I shorten it, this becomes shorter. So we need to add one more uh, dimension here, and that's to control this opening angle. So for that, just go DI again for dimension, go with angular, you go from this line to this reference line and you place it over here. You select it, uh, you go parameter and here you can say opening. Make sure again that it's an instance parameter, hit OK. So we've got that parameter and if we go over here and maybe change it to like 15 degrees, hit apply. As you can see now this changed to 15. If we go and change it to, I don't know, 30 hit apply, it changed to 30. So we've got our opening action and we've got this thing uh, set to the correct height. Now it's only the, a matter of creating a panel over here. So how do you create that panel? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the scale uh, for this view because this is too large. So when I put it on 20, it looks a bit smaller. So now it's workable. Now what you need to do is you need to set the work plane for your window panel. So you go to create, you go to set work plane, and then you go pick a plane. Okay. And then you hover over this thing and you want the horizontal one. So you hit tab once and you select the horizontal plane. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create the, the actual window panel. And for that, just go to extrusion 
and just go with rectangle and create a simple rectangle like this. Okay, this looks uh, very uh, unprofessional, but don't worry, we're going to set it up. So first you go to the dimensions, so DI for dimensions, and you go from one to the center line to the exterior one, you place it kind of like this and you hit EQ. So that constrains to make it equal, then you do this from the outside and you create another dimension. Okay, so once you have this, um, what we need to make sure is that the uh, width of the panel is exactly the same as the inner width of this window. So how do we do that? Well, we need to hit finish just for a moment. We need to go to the exterior side or maybe floor plan. Yeah. And as you can see here, these reference planes are already equaled out. So we just need to create a or, or another, another dimension that's going to be a parameter for the width. So just select that, go parameter, uh, width. I hope I spelled that right. You go instance and reporting parameter. Again, width of your curtain panel, it's going to change according to your curtain wall and how you place it and how you set it up. So you want to make sure that it's an instance parameter so each panel can be different. And you want to make sure that it's a reporting parameter because we're just getting the number from this. Hit OK, go into 3D and select this shape go into edit extrusion and here for this one you go parameter and you call it panel width oops i shouldn't have done that again i made a mistake so again parameter i forgot to say instance before hitting okay so don't make my mistake Anyway, now we need to go over here to the family types dialog and for the find the width parameter, copy that text, place it over here, minus 100 millimeters for the frame, uh, for the frame thickness, hit apply, okay. And now as we change the, the panel, this will change as well. Okay, so now one more thing we need to do is we need to go align and we need to uh, find Okay, you go like this and you need to find the top of this line. So you select this reference line top and then you select this line and you lock it in place and you do the same thing on the bottom. You find this line, select this, lock it in place. Okay, once you have this, uh, let's make this into an actual frame. So just go to rectangle, offset, 550 millimeters, maybe make it larger, 60 millimeters. You go from one side to the other uh, you hit space to flip it on the in, in, inner side. And now let's just lock this uh, distance in place. So you just go dimension. And you go from this line to this line, place it, lock it. And you repeat the same thing on all of these. Like that and like this. Okay, it's locked in place. And uh, let's just make this extrusion end at minus 60. Minus because as you remember, uh, the, the last one should, it was minus. I don't know why it just flips it on the other side. So this is what the panel looks like. And now you want to flex it. Uh, yeah, not like uh, flex it, just <laughs> test it out. So you just go over here and you stretch it a bit. And as you can see, uh, the panel is changing. You go to maybe the exterior. You change this and the panel is changing as well. You go to the left and you again, you stretch it out to your, come on. Okay, and as you can see, everything is working. And if we change the angle, or maybe let's go to 3D and change the angle. Let's place it like that. Change the angle to 15, hit apply, that works. Okay, so there you go. It's working, let's just add the, the panel glass, so for that, Let's just go create, extrusion, a rectangle, go from here to this side. And now lock it in place on all sides. And uh, for the thickness, let's just do like six millimeters because it's glass, or sorry, minus six. And apply, and let's change the material to some glass. Okay, hit finish. Yeah, that looks right. So now I'm just going to select both frames and change their material to something uh, aluminum, if we can find it. Uh, what's that, metal? Let's find some matte, some darker. Let's see. 
Oh, let's make it like this. Hit apply. Okay. And if we go into realistic. Yeah, it looks really cool. Okay, so this works now and let's load it into a project and test it out. So I'm just going to go here to file, new uh, new project, uh, let's use architectural template, hit OK and uh, let's go wall, open up the wall command, storefront and place a simple curtain wall. Okay, uh, now you need to go into 3D or before we do that, uh, let's just go back to our family. Where is it? Okay, I'll load it into the project and, and now go into 3D. Let's see, is this the exterior side? Yeah, so you kind of hover over uh, one of these panels and you hit the tab a few times till you can select the panel. Then you unpin it, you go over here and you find your family and you place it. And you can do that a few times. Unpin it, place a family. And go over here, unpin it, place family. Okay, so, on, and you can actually change the numbers. So here it can go maybe 60. Uh, this one can go maybe one to appear closed. And this one, let's do it at 30. So as you can see, you can actually change each one uh, as much as you want. Let's do this one at like 10. So yeah, there you go. So you've got your uh, little curtain wall panels that are actually windows that open and you can actually open them up at uh, different intervals and as you can see they've got glass in them and of course you can change the type of glass and yeah they look really cool I'm actually quite happy with how this turned out okay so that's pretty much it for this tutorial if you want to download this project or any of else any else any other of my projects uh, check out my patreon first a link in the description or if you want some one-on-one -on -one, uh, tutoring for 30 dollars a month you can get an hour of my time to help you with whatever private problem you have okay so that's pretty much it for this tutorial thank you for watching please subscribe like and share this video and if you have any questions comments or suggestions make sure to leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching and have a nice day